Welcome to Fossil Linux Journal, ladies and gentlemen. Switching to a new operating system can be an exciting venture, promising new features, enhanced performance, and often greater control over your computing environment. However, despite the many benefits that Linux offers, many users find themselves struggling and eventually reverting to their previous system. Understanding why these transitions fail can help in addressing the challenges and making the switch smoother. Here are the four reasons why Linux converts often fail. And in the end, there is my strategy suggestion on how it can still be a success. Let's get it started. Many users have been accustomed to the interface and functionality of Windows or Mac OS for years. Switching to Linux requires learning the ways to accomplish everyday tasks which can be time consuming. Changing habits such as installing software through familiar app stores or using specific keyboard shortcuts can be frustrating, especially when the new method seems less intuitive or efficient. Additionally, users are often comfortable with the appearance and operation of their old system. Any deviation can be perceived as an obstacle even if it is not a downgrade. Without strong motivation or necessity, many users quick give up and return to the familiar operating system. And by the way, if you like Linux content, then click the subscribe button now. Give the video a thumbs up and activate the bell to always stay up to date when there is more content. I say thank you and now let's go on with the video. A common stumbling block for Linux converts is the availability and compatibility of software. Many specialized applications used on Windows or Mac OS are not natively available for Linux. This is particularly true for professional software like Adobe Creative Suite, Microsoft Office or certain games. While there are alternatives such as GIMP or LibreOffice and emulation solutions like Wine or Play on Linux, these are not always perfect and can be limited in functionality or user friendliness. Using alternatives often requires users to adopt new workflows and potentially forgot certain familiar features. This can be particularly problematic in professional environments where specific software functionalities are essential for workflows. File compatibility with proprietary formats can also pose a problem leading to additional difficulties in collaboration with others that do not use Linux. Linux can require more technical knowledge, especially when it comes to system configuration, driver installation or solving compatibility issues. While modern Linux distributions like Ubuntu or Linux Mint aim to be user-friendly, there are still situations where terminal commands are necessary or specific technical knowledge is required. New users might struggle to get used to use terminal commands and finding solutions independently. Even simple tasks like installing a printer or configuring a Wi-Fi connection can seem more complex if they do not run as smooth as they do on Windows or Mac OS. They need to sometimes rely on technical forums or documentation to solve problems can be discouraging. This is particularly relevant in a world where users are increasingly accustomed to plug-and-play solutions and instant results. Frustration with such technical hurdles can cause users to give up before fully realizing the benefits of Linux. While the Linux community can be very supportive and helpful, the structured and easy accessible support channels that Windows or Mac OS users are accustomed to are often lacking. Official support for manufacturers or dedicated support teams is rarer and users are often rely on forums, wikis and community contributions. These information sources can be valuable, but they also require the initiative and the ability to extract relevant information from a wealth of posts. Users who do not have the time or patience to swift through these resources can quickly feel overwhelmed. This can be especially frustrating when they encounter a problem that requires a quick solution but find no immediate help available. The often fragmented nature of the Linux community with many different distributions and therefore different support sources can be additionally confusing. 
Unlike a centralized support system often available with proprietary operating systems, Linux users may need to consult multiple sources to get the help they need. This increases the effort and complexity of troubleshooting. These reasons lead many converts to eventually decide to return to their familiar operating system as the effort and challenges of switching often seem greater than the perceived benefits. For many users, the initial hurdles overweight the long-term advantages that Linux could offer, especially if they are in an environment where they need to work quickly and efficiently. And now the question remains, how to fix this? First of all, don't bury your head in the sand. If something goes wrong along the way and you can't solve the problem, it might be better to roll back as a first measure rather than getting stuck and then throwing everything away in frustration. Over the time using Linux, I had quite a few inquiries and requests about it. On my YouTube channels, you can find many videos in the subject. I even created videos on switching to Linux. This might help you as a first measure if you're feeling stuck. Here's a brief overview of my recommended strategy. First, test different Linux distros like Ubuntu, Linux Mint or Soren OS and virtual machines on your current operating system. Once you found your favorite, the next step is to try it on physical hardware. I recommend using a secondary device to do this. It could be an old laptop or a decommissioned PC. It is important that a machine has an SSD and at least 8GB of memory. Anything less such as mechanical hard drive or 2 or 4GB RAM could quickly become a bottleneck making you think Linux is slow when it's actually the hardware. Therefore, it's highly beneficial to have a device that's 3 to 6 years old or perhaps borrow one in the family. Install Linux on it and set it up for daily use. Ideally, you can work with Linux over several weeks or months and become familiar with it. In case of emergency, you still have your PC with Windows or your Mac with macOS available. A safe bet. Once you're comfortable with Linux, you can decide how to proceed. Whether you want to switch to Linux on your main computer or not is up to you. If you've already made the switch to Linux, feel free to share your experience in the comments. Everyone can benefit from it and together we're stronger. In the end card there are two more videos that might interest you. One gives you some decision making criteria for switching to Linux in the light of Windows 11 and the coming recall function and the other video addresses the question of whether you need an antivirus scanner under Linux like you do under Windows. Thank you for the kind attention ladies and gentlemen. I wish you a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and see you then. Peace.